Filipinos are more genetically diverse than most people realize. Beneath the familiar image of archipelagic life lies a surprising and complex genetic story, one that spans thousands of years, thousands of miles, and countless migrations. What if we told you that the DNA of a modern Filipino contains traces from ancient Taiwanese seafarers, African ancestors from Madagascar, and even colonial settlers from Mexico and Spain? How can one group of islands hold such a wide and unexpected genetic footprint? The answer lies in a remarkable journey, one shaped by waves of migration, ancient isolation, cross-ocean trade, and over three centuries of colonization. From the earliest hunter-gatherers who walked across now sunken land bridges, to Austronesian navigators who sailed from Taiwan, to Spanish ships that connected Manila with Acapulco, the Filipino genome has been shaped by layers upon layers of human history. Today, new research in genetics, is shedding light on just how unique Filipino DNA really is. Scientists are discovering that the Philippines is not just a melting pot. It's a genetic mosaic with pieces that predate recorded history and stretch across continents. In this video, we'll explore the many threads that weave together the Filipino identity. We'll look at what modern DNA studies are telling us and how they're rewriting the story of where Filipinos come from. From ancient Negrito ancestry to modern overseas blending, we'll follow the hidden story written in blood, bone, and memory. So let's dive deep, because understanding the past may just change how we see ourselves today. Around 4,000 years ago, long before the Philippines became the nation we know today, a wave of people began setting out from the island of Taiwan. These were the early Austronesians, skilled seafarers, farmers, and toolmakers, who would go on to shape much of Southeast Asia and the Pacific. According to the widely accepted Out of Taiwan hypothesis, these Austronesian-speaking people began migrating southward by boat, reaching the northern Philippines first. Over generations, they spread across the islands, eventually making their way to Indonesia, Polynesia, and as far as Madagascar off the coast of Africa. What made the Austronesians unique wasn't just their language or tools. It was their mastery of the sea. They built outrigger canoes and developed early navigation techniques, allowing them to cross open oceans long before European explorers. This maritime culture laid the foundation for many of the customs, fishing practices, and boat building traditions still seen in the Philippines today. Genetically, the Austronesians left a strong imprint on the Filipino population. Studies show that many Filipinos share markers with indigenous groups in Taiwan, especially the Amos and Atayal peoples. There are also genetic links with Polynesian and Micronesian populations, showing how far this ancient network reached. But it wasn't just about genes, it was also about language and culture. Nearly all Philippine languages today are part of the Austronesian language family, further proving their deep influence. The words for rice, boat, house, and family across the islands can often be traced back to a common Austronesian root. This Austronesian legacy forms one of the core layers of Filipino identity. It connects the Philippines to a vast ocean-spanning heritage, one that highlights ingenuity, adaptation, and exploration. While later migrations and colonizations would add new layers, the Austronesian journey was the first major step in the formation of the Filipino genome and culture. Long before the Austronesians arrived, the Philippine Islands were already home to some of the world's most ancient peoples. These are the Negrito groups, such as the Ida, Agda, and Adi, who are believed to have lived in the archipelago for tens of thousands of years. Genetic studies show that Negrito populations carry a deep ancestry that dates back over 40,000 years, making them among the earliest known inhabitants not just of the Philippines, but of Southeast Asia as a whole. Their DNA reveals connections to Australo-Melanesian peoples found in Papua New Guinea and Australia, showing that they belong to a much older migration wave that predates the Austronesians by millennia. Physically and genetically distinct from most other Filipinos, Negrito groups have unique genetic markers that reflect this ancient lineage. In fact, scientists have found that certain traits, such as shorter stature and darker skin tones, have remained relatively stable over thousands of years, despite surrounding cultural and genetic changes. 
What's even more fascinating is that while Negrito groups are often lumped together, each community has its own unique genetic profile. This suggests that they have remained relatively isolated from one another for thousands of years, adapting independently to different island environments. Their traditional lifestyles, often involving hunting, foraging, and a deep knowledge of a forest, also reflect a way of life that has persisted since prehistoric times. These communities represent a living connection to humanity's ancient past. Today, Negrito peoples are a small minority, but their DNA plays an important role in the genetic makeup of many Filipinos, especially those in Luzon and Palawan. They remind us that Filipino identity isn't just shaped by recent history, but also by deep ancestral roots that stretch back to the dawn of human migration in Asia. After the arrival of the Austronesians and long before Spanish colonization, the Philippine Islands became part of a dynamic web of trade and cultural exchange across Southeast Asia. During this period, new waves of people, particularly from Malay, Chinese, and Indian civilizations, left a lasting impact on Filipino culture and genetics. The Malay influence came through powerful maritime empires like Srivijaya and Majapahit, which dominated the region for centuries. These kingdoms brought with them new technologies, political systems, and cultural practices. Some coastal communities in the Philippines adopted Malay languages, social hierarchies, and even architectural styles. Genetically, intermarriage between local populations and Malay traders or settlers added another layer to the Filipino gene pool. Chinese merchants, especially from southern China, were also active in the region. Long before the Spanish era, Chinese traders were settling in port cities like Cebu and Manila, marrying into local families and contributing to the growth of early urban centers. Today, many Filipino-Chinese families can trace their roots back to this period. Genetic studies show that Chinese ancestry is particularly common in some lowland populations and urban areas. Even India, though farther away, played a surprising role. Through trade and the spread of Hinduism and Buddhism via the Malay world, Indian culture made its way into early Filipino society. Ancient artifacts, scripts, and even royal customs show traces of Indian influence. While the genetic contribution from India may be smaller, it still exists, especially among communities with historical ties to older trade routes. Together, these interactions created a more complex Filipino identity, one shaped not just by migration, but by centuries of exchange. The DNA of many Filipinos today carries subtle but clear traces of these encounters, woven into the cultural and biological fabric of the islands. When the Spanish arrived in the Philippines in the 16th century, they didn't come alone. With them came soldiers, missionaries, settlers, and a centuries-long connection to Latin America, especially Mexico. This colonial period would profoundly shape the culture, religion, and even the genetics of the Filipino people. For over 250 years, the Manila-Acapulco galleon trade connected the Philippines directly to New Spain, modern-day Mexico. Goods flowed across the Pacific, but so did people. Mexican soldiers, artisans, and administrators were stationed in the Philippines, while Filipinos were also taken to Mexico. Many of these men married local women resulting in mixed-race families and new cultural identities. Recent genetic studies show that many Filipinos, especially in Luzon, have detectable traces of Latin American and Spanish ancestry. But it wasn't just European Spanish blood. The Mexican population itself was already mixed, with indigenous, European, and African roots. This means that some of the genetic diversity seen in the Philippines today may also reflect Native American and African ancestry introduced through Mexico. In fact, historical records mention Afro-Mexicans arriving in Manila during the colonial period, a little-known aspect of Filipino history. Under Spanish rule, conversion to Catholicism was widespread. Spanish surnames were introduced, along with European-style education, clothing, and governance. Many Filipino mestizos, those of mixed local and foreign ancestry, rose to positions of influence, especially in colonial towns. Over time, this blending helped shape a new kind of Filipino identity, one deeply intertwined with both Asia and the West. Culturally, the Spanish and Mexican imprint is undeniable. 
and genetically, it forms yet another layer in the complex mosaic of the Filipino genome. This colonial chapter shows how global empires and forced encounters created new communities, new lineages, and new identities in the islands. While much of the Philippines came under Spanish rule, the southern regions, particularly Mindanao, Sulu, and parts of Palawan, followed a different path. Long before the Spanish arrived, Islam had already taken root in these areas through trade and missionary work from neighboring Malay and Bornean sultanates. Muslim missionaries and traders from places like Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei established powerful Islamic sultanates in the south. The Sultanate of Sulu and the Sultanate of Maguindanao became influential centers of culture, politics, and religion. These regions resisted Spanish colonization fiercely and maintained their Islamic faith and identity for centuries. Genetically, the populations of the southern Philippines reflect these historical connections. Studies show distinct markers in Muslim Filipino groups, like the Tausig, Maranao, and Maguindanan, that link them more closely with Malaysians, Indonesians, and other Muslim-majority populations in Southeast Asia. There's also evidence of Arab influence, likely brought by traders and Islamic scholars, contributing another subtle thread to the southern Filipino gene pool. The result is a rich and diverse genetic landscape that sets southern populations apart from the rest of the country. This diversity is not only cultural, but biological, a reflection of centuries of connection across the Islamic world. In understanding Filipino DNA, it's essential to recognize that the South holds its own unique story, one shaped by faith, resistance, and global maritime exchange. In recent decades, the story of Filipino DNA has continued to evolve, shaped not by ancient migrations or colonial powers, but by modern movement across the globe. Millions of Filipinos now live and work abroad, forming one of the world's largest diaspora communities. From domestic workers in the Middle East to nurses in the United States, Filipino Overseas Foreign Workers, OFWs, have become an essential part of the global economy. But with this global presence comes a new kind of blending, through marriage, families, and the exchange of cultures and genes. Children of Filipino migrants are now growing up with mixed heritage, Filipino and Arab, Filipino and European, Filipino and African American. These modern unions are creating a new generation of Filipinos with global DNA footprints, adding fresh layers to an already diverse genetic story. At the same time, returning migrants are bringing home new languages, values, and perspectives, influencing identity in subtle but powerful ways. In a sense, the Filipino genome is still a work in progress, continuing to adapt, absorb, and transform with the times. Today, to be Filipino is to carry a history that is ancient and evolving, one that bridges islands, continents, and cultures through both blood and experience. The story of Filipino identity has long been told through language, culture, and colonial history. But now, with the help of modern genetics, a deeper and more complex picture is emerging, one that reaches far beyond textbooks. DNA studies are showing that the Filipino genome is not a single thread, but a rich tapestry. It contains traces of ancient Negrito ancestors who walked the land before the seas rose, Austronesian voyagers who sailed across vast oceans and traders, settlers, and colonizers from Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and the Americas. Each group left a genetic footprint, shaping who Filipinos are today, physically, biologically, and culturally. This genetic diversity is not something to simplify or overlook. It's something to celebrate. It reflects centuries of resilience, adaptation, and openness to the world. More importantly, it challenges the idea that identity must be one thing or another. Filipino identity is layered, evolving, and inclusive. It's rooted in both deep history and modern global movement. By understanding the stories written in our DNA, we can better appreciate the richness of our shared past and embrace the many ways it continues to shape who we are today.